They look like us. They talk like us. They walk among us. Yet, they are not us. Ever since the dawn of civilization, secret societies have existed. What do they know that we don't? And why do they exist? Some exist as a benign social group in a small town, but others span the breadth of the entire planet, infiltrating every corner of our society. An assembly that spreads in our ignorance, working silently to accomplish its unwritten mission. The scope of their power is unbeknownst to even the most intelligent minds of our time. Are these groups here to protect us, allowing man to live under their silent watch, or do they have evil intentions far beyond our darkest nightmares? Mind control, secret weapons, conspiracy to overthrow the government, intelligence sharing with otherworldly beings, and clandestine eavesdropping of our most intimate communication. Organizations like the Freemasons and the Skull and Bones existed in complete secrecy for many years. However, we now know of their existence and we believe their mission to be purely humanitarian. But perhaps there is another organization, one that has yet to be classified, one that exists only under the dark veil of secrecy. It appears to be a peaceful organization, but weary to show itself to the public. The recent manifestation of clues and evidence has prompted interest from truth seekers around the world. You may have seen an octagonal seal or crest with the word Dharma in the center. The word itself, an Indian spiritual term, this is their mark. Why do they exist and what are they here for? Any clandestine organization of significant stature cannot exist in complete secrecy forever. Documents, stories, records, telling items that eventually float their way to the top of our collective consciousness Theory and assumptions quickly inch closer from fiction to fact. It is perhaps by piecing these minuscule clues together one by one that we start to solve the puzzle. Join us in this Mysteries of the Universe, the Dharma Initiative. now return to Mysteries of the Universe, the Dharma Initiative. Outside of Las Vegas, Nevada, 1978, a University of Las Vegas college student purchases a jumpsuit for a costume party at a local thrift store. He attends the party dressed as a janitor. During the course of the evening, he is photographed for the college newspaper. Three weeks later, a mysterious knock sounds at the door of his fraternity house. Two men begin to ask a series of detailed questions to the student in regard to the origin of his costume. The men eventually leave after learning all they can, leaving the befuddled youth in a cloud of unanswered questions of his own. The only distinguishing feature of this garment is this logo, a curiously shaped octagon with the word Dharma in the middle. What was once an innocent Halloween costume is now the impetus for the much larger investigation at hand. What or who is the Dharma Initiative? Aliens, flying saucers, abductions. Nevada has long been known for an area of considerable importance to otherworldly creatures. Some claim that the area is a veritable hotbed of extraterrestrial activity known as Area 51. Could the proximity of this incident in relation to Area 51 be a link to an answer? It is suspected that workers at the infamous military base are known to wear color-coded jumpsuits, much like the one found in the thrift store, that designate their rank and occupation. Those that work there, or claim to work there, are said to vanish for long periods of time. 
If the government or someone claiming to be from the government is concerned about a missing article of clothing, then why are they not concerned about a person gone missing? In the following interview, we speak with someone who claims that his neighbor vanished after completing a job interview with a mysterious group that was looking to fill an open position. My neighbor Phil was looking for a job. He said he was on round five of an interview for this group out in Michigan. Five interviews is a lot of interviews, especially for a security guard position. Phil said they had him taking all sorts of weird head exams, like ink blots, and you know, just kind of random exams like that. So tell me, when was the last time you saw Phil? Ah, the last time I saw Phil. Uh, he said something about going back for the last interview, and then I never saw the guy again. Someone came, sold his house, took his car, even took his dog. His girlfriend didn't even know. I called the police. They said they would investigate. It was a year ago. The guy's gone. Cases like this are not unique. The United States is riddled with stories of people disappearing after participating in questionable job interviews. There are four common traits of the job postings. This graphic watermark, the quantity of similar job openings, strange tests, and the large number of interviews. And almost without fail, after accepting the position, the applicant disappears. A large number of interviews for occupations such as physicist and engineer are standard. But why would a job opening for a car mechanic require five interviews? Why does a janitor position involve psychological testing? Why do these people leave without explanation? Portland, Oregon. Our investigation of similar disappearances led us to this woman, a grade school teacher named Olivia. Her family and friends said she applied for a teaching position, interviewed heavily for the job, and then left without a trace. Her apartment was subleased for three years with no explanation of her absence. Her parents were recently interviewed. She just left one day, disappeared, and I haven't heard from her since. You think she left for a job or? Huh, a job. She had a job. I mean, she's gone. Note the graphic seal in the upper right corner of this preliminary job application. Supplied to us by Olivia's parents, it matches the one on the jumpsuit and job posting. Secret societies are known to use special identifying symbols to assist members in identification of official documents and property. Often used in these interviews is the Rorschach test. This test is used with the psychiatric community to assist in determining a person's mental state. It is also often used on the criminally insane. Here is a list of questions we found for an interview. Why should a veterinarian be profiled in the same manner as a psychotic killer? Intense interviews, psychological tests, disappearances, secrecy. If someone or some group is putting this much effort into interviews, then exactly what type of organization is this? All the puzzle pieces are there, but the more we try to put them together, more pieces are added to the table. An ever-expanding table, and the place setting is serving up mystery. We now return to Mysteries of the Universe, the Dharma Initiative. A church, normally a place for worship, not a place of scandal. This church in Los Angeles has always been regarded as a sanctuary for the mind and spirit. Perhaps there is a secondary element to this church that our researchers pray to uncover. Mysteries of the Universe has discovered that this church has quite a large collection basket. Records state that this church has received funds upward of $1.5 million from a private organization. Observe the octagonal logo in the upper right corner. This is the same image found on the job posting. We have found hundreds of invoices for enough supplies to sustain a colony for quite some time. But not all items purchased make sense. 
strange requests and purchase orders that cover the most unusual spectrum of mystery. 1.4 tons of seeds, ammunition for M1 carbines, pneumatic tubing, animal care supplies, zookeeper supplies, electronics, televisions, speakers, wires, but enough to service a town. Electromagnetic coils and Tesla coils, psychotropic drugs, other pharmacological supplies, and soft restraints. Ostensibly, the church is responsible for the procurement of these strange wares. However, our reporters' investigation into the church's financial records have proven there is nothing unusual. Furthermore, a stunning discovery is that the church does not own the very land it sits on. Research into the landowner's name has led our intrepid team to discover a dizzying array of shell companies that have ordered all the unusual supplies. Our investigation brought us to this man, a behavioral psychologist who works at a Los Angeles clinic. He too claims he was interrogated by the Dharma Initiative. He did not wish to be identified. My name is I am a behavioral psychologist with a strong background in pharmacology. The interviews were intense. They also interviewed my colleague. He was a chemist. His name was Olin or something or other. They asked me questions about every facet of my job, everything I've ever learned, or drug reactions, side effects, even things we were still researching, classified research, mind you. Ludovico, etc. The Ludovico Technique. It's where a subject is repeatedly told a series of phrases or images, and upon repetition, the subject may eventually believe they are true. Some believe this may be called brainwashing. All the point, but I considered everything and I didn't think it was a humanitarian mission at all. When it came to my ethics and values, it, it crossed the line. I thought it was a cult. Not religious, but certainly had the same feel and, and, and actions of a cult. Ammunition, drugs, tranquilizers, but perhaps the strangest of all, Submarine fuel. What type of organization would maintain and operate a submarine fleet? Why would they need one? The only time a submarine is used for clandestine purposes and operations is to sneak in and out of contestant waters under the cover of liquid night. During World War II, submarines were regularly used for transport to areas in the non-industrial locations in the South Pacific not suitable for large ships. Many of these vessels were lost at sea. But could they also be stolen or bought on the black market by the Dharma Initiative? Seemingly limitless resources and tendrils that touch every corner of society. More when we return. Sunday here on ABC. We now return to Mysteries of the Universe, the Dharma Initiative. Many times, smaller organizations are controlled by a larger shadowy company, silent and hiding in the dark, but secretly funneling resources without a clear link. Much of what we have uncovered is layered in anecdotal evidence and legend. However, there are hard documented facts and several flesh and blood people that are pulling the strings. Our mysteries researchers have found a strong link between the Dharma Initiative and what could be a larger, more powerful force working behind the scenes, spearheaded by a man named Alvar Hanso. Who is this man? And what does he have to do with the Dharma Initiative? Details about Alvar Hanso are shrouded in mystery but his reputation is made clear through public documents and records. A Danish World War II munitions profiteer, Alvar Hanso provided weapons and ammunition during the war to various resistance movements around Europe, earning him a large fortune. After the war, Alvar Hanso became the leading purveyor of high technology armaments to NATO. Some say stopping only after what he felt was guilt and regret about profiting from war and destruction. However, before the war, Alvar Hanso attended the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor for a year as a foreign exchange student. There he lived with a family, the DeGroots, and developed an affinity for the local area. 
At that time, this man, Gerald de Groot, was eight years old. It is said that Alvar found him precocious and charming. Curiously, when our research team tried to uncover de Groot's college records, they found him to be expunged, erased from existence. Piecing together from second-hand resources, we deduced that Alvar's undergraduate degree was in chemistry from a university in Billund, Denmark. And he returned to a university in Michigan for a master's in engineering, quite possibly spending more time with the de Groots and bonding with Gerald. We suspect the families stayed in touch over the years. Then, when Gerald was a graduate student in his search of financial backing for his project, the Dharma Initiative, he contacted his family friend, Alvar Hanso, for funding. Who exactly is Gerald de Groot? We tried to investigate further into the de Groot-Hanso connection, but were stymied at every turn. Our team went to Ann Arbor, Michigan, to this location of de Groot's laboratory, but were barred from entry. Barred from the truth. We now return to Mysteries of the Universe, the Dharma Initiative. A secret organization is only as private as its most public fact. And this we know, the Dharma Initiative exists. As we consider vivid eyewitness accounts and empirical evidence, we begin to shine a light in the darkest corners of this room. When conjecture, half-truths, and myths are pieced together, it stops being science fiction and becomes science fact. There are many things you can do. Be vigilant, be aware. A secret organization such as the Dharma Initiative is not immune from making mistakes that you can be on the lookout for. For example, a village on the Isle of Tonga. On an otherwise unsuspecting day, the village is the sudden recipient of a one-ton air-dropped food pallet. The smoking gun, again, the octagonal logo on a field of white. Every single foodstuff is labeled in this way. Soup, chili, salad dressing, peanut butter, oatmeal, desserts, even beer and rum. Hardly the stuff of humanitarian aid. Manufacture, unknown. Point of origin, unknown. We think it was a mistaken resupply attempt for an outpost in the South Pacific. Is the Dharma Initiative located on one of the 169 islands of Tonga? Could it be that it was originally meant for the real location of the Dharma Initiative? And what happened to the plane? There are many stories of missing planes that have vanished while en route to islands like Tonga. The Bermuda Triangle, a mysterious section of ocean in the Atlantic, Perhaps the Dharma Initiative is linked to this paranormal activity. And who would have the means to airdrop pallets of food or weapons? Alvar Hanso made his fortune supplying the resistance during World War II and did so by any means necessary. By land, by air, or by sea. He would have the knowledge and armada to create a supply line to an outlying post of secrecy. Ann Arbor, Michigan. A newspaper prints an article stating volunteers and test subjects are needed for an anthropology experiment that would require entire semesters abroad in a tropical locale. Sequestered from friends and family is a mandatory condition of participation, as is a rigorous aptitude test and a physical stress test. The person in charge? Gerald de Groot, the graduate student who seems to have unlimited funding for his project. Our intrepid reporters made every effort to uncover the nature of his scholastic endeavor, but were given a no comment at every turn. Lab testing, a faraway base, secrecy. Mysteries of the Universe believes the Dharma Initiative is behind this educational experience. The highlights on this map of the world show where instances like this have been reported. Chances are a similar instance may occur near you. It is important to be vigilant and aware of anything that may appear suspicious. Look for these two clues. The octagonal logo, used as a special identifier to other members. We have found these four variations, but the possibility remains that there may be more. These lines surrounding the logo appear to be oriental in nature, perhaps 
communist China. Two, job postings and openings for specialized positions that required the same testing of the criminally insane and a level of secrecy only used in the highest branches of government. Many pieces of the puzzle are still missing. But one thing we know is that this organization exists. Purpose? Unknown. We know its roots start with this man, Gerald de Groot, and his benefactor, Alvar Hanso. We know it is recruiting for new members. We know that it has the power to maintain a fleet of submarines. It has weapons, an unlimited source of income, ties to the church, and we know it wishes to remain shrouded in secrecy. Update. Since the original air date of this production, Mysteries of the Universe has uncovered startling new information about the secret organization, the Dharma Initiative. We had told you the story of a school teacher from Portland, Oregon named Olivia, who had taken a job offer and had mysteriously disappeared for three years. Since our broadcast, our investigative team has discovered that she has reappeared. A recent telephone call. Hello, may I speak to Olivia, please? This is she. Hello, Olivia. I'm calling with Mysteries of the Universe. I was wondering if I could ask you a few questions. What? This is Mysteries of the Universe. Several days later, our production offices received this written statement from the school teacher. During my absence, I was performing research in the South Pacific. I no longer wish to be contacted regarding this matter. Thank you. Once again, the South Pacific appears as a character in this ongoing investigation. Did Olivia return at just the right time to save her life? Also, it seems that our producers are not the only ones performing an investigation. Our offices have received several anonymous phone calls questioning the origins of our research. Harmless prank calls or something more nefarious. Since our original investigation, several experts in the discipline of martial arts have come forward to share information regarding the logo of the Dharma Initiative. In fact, this is not a logo at all. This is a symbol that dates back to the ancient Orient. It is a Bagua symbol that represents protection. Each side of the octagon represents opponents. One could stand in the middle of the octagon and be protected from all sides. The specific arrangement of lines seems to have ties to astronomy, astrology, geography, anatomy, and more. Much like the rest of the Dharma Initiative, further information on the meaning of these symbols is shrouded in secrecy. The exact answers are perhaps known only by the cultures of the past. One final missive from the unknown. We have a report on the church originally investigated in this program. This past Christmas, several staff members have mysteriously disappeared. They were reported missing but never found. Mysteries of the Universe launched a follow-up investigation to see if these staff members disappeared to the South Pacific. Close analysis of the church's waste receptacles revealed this. A partially destroyed document with a charred logo similar to the other logos. But this one had a lamp in the center. Coincidence? Public records show that the newly appointed general manager of the church is named Eloise Hawking. However, she has refused several requests for an interview. In a most unusual twist, Miss Hawking apparently does not have an official birth certificate, but she is listed as the mother on the birth certificate of one Daniel Faraday. As to why they have two different last names, especially when no father is listed on the certificate, is yet another mystery. Destroyed records, missing persons, questionable documents, missing information. Has another organization secretly taken over the Dharma Initiative? Discovering answers in a world of the unknown provides a brief moment of satisfaction. But answers sometimes do nothing but create more questions. One day the final chapter of this story will be written and the book will be closed. the stream of unanswered questions continue or will this enigma eventually be pushed or forced into the light of truth only time will tell the ultimate fate of this mysteries of the universe <laughs>